welcome to Set List Stand Up Without a Net live at Nerdville! Will you welcome the never before seen set list of Dana Gould? Well, first of all, episode, episode three has been made. It's called Attack of the Close. Um, here's the amazing thing about Star Wars, and I think that Star Wars actually represents America wonderfully because it is a ginormous franchise that occupies people's lives. And when you look at the totality of the output, there's almost four hours of quality. <laughs> There was one scene in one of the movies where he's talking to the girl and there's a, there's a robot flies up to the window and starts washing the windows behind him. Now, anybody who knew what they were doing would go, cut, get that out of there, please. He actually spent money to put it in there. If he directed Jaws, like when the shark came up, there'd also be like, a pelican fighting a hang glider. <laughs> I want to watch this. No, no, oh, there's also this. Because people need to hear no. Look, I'm going to draw a crazy analogy. Pol Pot. <laughs> that is the mentality that leads you to Jawas slipping on Tauntaun shit and Moss Eisley. <laughs> You need to hear the word no. And what is amazing about Star Wars, the first film, by which I mean the fourth film, <laughs> it is not dated in the effects. It is dated in the, the Siegfried and Roydian femininity of Mark Hamill. <laughs> In today's cinema market, you could never have the hero of the movie going, but I was on my way to Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. <laughs> Matt Selman of The Simpsons, a very good friend of mine, had a genius observation. When R2 and 3PO are in the ready room and they're in the trash compactor, R2 goes, and he goes, the comlink? link? I almost forgot. I turned it off. He's a robot. <laughs> he can't forget a fucking thing. <laughs> Sometimes in your favorite science fiction movies, there are glaring lapses in logic. The original Planet of the Apes. I totally believe it. I buy it 100%. Then there's a scene where Charlton Heston is in this cell and he's talking to Nova, the mute native of the planet, and he's referring to the female astronaut on their ship that died upon landing. I'm sure you all remember it. I'm sure you've seen the film. <laughs> I don't know why I'm suddenly talking like Albert Brooks, but it'll help the story. <laughs> okay. If you've ever seen Tim Burton's Planet of the Apes, I, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say it's worse than a million 9-11s. <laughs> so, so I buy that he's on a planet run by apes. I buy it. But then he goes, did I tell you about Stuart? There was a lovely girl, the most precious cargo we brought along. She was to be the new Eve, with our hot and eager help, of course. <laughs> really? Was that her job on the mission? I bet she thought she was the botanist. <laughs> uh, but that movie uh, was at least uh, palatable as opposed to the vast and and I would say unconscionable religion that has grown up around the Star Wars films that I find inconceivable. It's the same, it's like, why do Latinos like Morrissey? I can't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs>
Pinnacle!